Welcome to another edition of Gethsemane. We're so glad that you're in the house and you're in this place. Uh, we come for another week to study God's word. Before we move any further, please like, share. Uh, we want to be able to get this message out. Don't ignore me. Go ahead and hit that button uh, and let's get this message out uh, so that souls can be saved, hearts can be enlightened, and so uh, minds can be stirred up about God's word. Uh, also, we're so appreciative of all of those uh, that you have blessed by this ministry. We want to thank all of those who have sown a seed into this ministry. We want to thank you so much uh, for what you have done and you allow us and you bless us to be able to move forward. Uh, and so what we'll do, uh, we'll open up in a word of prayer, uh, then we'll begin our lesson on today. Let us bow. Father in heaven, we thank you for blessing us, for your word. We thank you, Father, for teaching us and showing us your way. We ask, Father, that you may strengthen us uh, where we are weak and allow us to see where we're blind. Your name we pray. Amen. Bless it. So our question on today uh, comes from our YouTube subscriber, uh, Greatness All Around, Greatness All Around, uh, and states, uh, in the question, so do consequences fall on the family of sinning men these days? All right. This was on a lesson uh, based upon a uh, previous question uh, dealing with David and David's sins cause consequences to fall on his family. And so the question is, uh, do uh, does consequences fall on the family of sinning men today? Uh, very good question. Uh, the question lies, if I do something, does that affect other people? All right. And so I want to dive into God's word and I want us uh, to be uh, able to look at Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse 16, Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse 16. And the Bible reads, the fathers shall not be put to death for their children. The fathers shall not be put to death for their children, neither shall the children be put to death for their fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. So we're in Deuteronomy, obviously we're in the Old Testament. We're in Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse 16. The father shall not be put to death because their children misbehaved. And the children shall not be put to death because the fathers have uh, misbehaved. And so in the teaching of God toward the children of Israel, it is in the mind of God and it was in the mind of God that every person will have to stand before God for their own sins. Right. So uh, here's the thing on Judgment Day. And I want us to look at that uh, as well on Judgment Day. I'm not going to have to answer for my father's sins. I'm not going to have to answer for my great what my great grandfather did. So uh, I won't lose my soul. Uh, and I understand that we went to Old Testament. I want to take you to New Testament. I'm not going to lose my soul because my uncle tripped and my mother didn't show up. Or if um, my brother or my sister didn't do what God called them to do. God does not. Uh, condemn the whole family because of one person's sin, right? Uh, uh, so we just looked at Deuteronomy uh, chapter 24 and verse 16. Each one shall be put to death for his own sin. Now, this is Old Testament, but let's look at what the New Testament says. Here we are uh, in Matthew chapter 25. And we're going to begin at verse 31. Matthew chapter 25, and, and we're going to begin uh, at verse 31. And the Bible reads, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory. So we're talking about Judgment Day. And, and I, I appreciate the question. The question that was presented is, um, are the sins of, uh, of men cast on their family? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 25 in verse 31, when the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him. We're talking about the end of days, right? So on that last day, when Jesus comes with his mighty angels, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. 
right? Uh, it's, it's now time for judgment. And before him shall be gathered all nations. So what the Bible is letting us know that in the end, everybody's going to be gathered together and everybody's going to have to face Jesus. Let me say this as a, on a side note. Whether you accept Jesus Christ, whether you believe in Jesus or not, on that day you will have to face. Somebody says, I believe in God, I don't believe in Jesus. It doesn't matter. On that day, you're going to have to face Jesus. Somebody says, well, uh, you know, the Father is the only one. It doesn't matter. Somebody says, I believe in the trees and I believe in nature and Mother Nature. I want to let you know on Judgment Day, you're not standing before Mother Nature. <laughs> you're going to stand before Jesus. It's Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus is who you're going to have to. You either ignore him now and face him later, or you can acknowledge him now and, and be embraced by him later. But all men will have to face Jesus. I want to I want to lay that out. Um, I don't care what religion. I don't care what your faith is. Somebody says, well, I don't I don't believe in that. You don't have to believe. I, I want to say this. You don't have to believe in Jesus, but you will face him. <laughs> I don't believe that he is the son of God. You don't have to, but you will face him. All men, the Bible says in verse 31, uh, um, uh, in verse 32, and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate. I want to let you know, Jesus will be doing the separating. We're in verse 32 on judgment day. I know we're answering a question on today, but maybe some of you right now, you're reflecting. What kind of life have you been living? One of, one of the practices I think it's good to do every day is to wake up in the morning. And if you know that you sinned or if you know that you have not done what God has got, called you to do, don't wallow on yesterday and don't mull in the past. Just do better. If Matter of fact, right now, if you're hearing me and I'm, you're on the sound of my voice, you actually have time to get it right. Brother Williams, I made so many. Yes, we, we probably all have made so many Matter of fact, at some point, you, you stop counting your sins. It's too many. If you know that one day you're going to have to face the Lord and give an answer for the things that you've done. The Bible says that every man will stand before the Lord. Every man will stand before Jesus Christ and he will be doing the separating. Jesus will be doing the separating one by one, one by one. Brother Williams, how does this pertain to the question? Jesus is not separating you based on families. He's separating individuals. I want you to think about that. He's separating individuals. He's not separating families. I, matter of fact, he's not even separating you based upon the congregation you attended. Somebody says, I go to a real strong congregation. Yes, but you got to make sure that you are doing what God has called you to. You could be at a good church and you still lose your soul. God does not grant you heaven because you attended a strong church. God blesses you with eternal salvation because you had a relationship with him. Now, you have perfect attendance at that congregation, but do you have a do you have a good relationship with him? I want you to think about that. Hey, listen, I have she says I have a wonderful husband, but God does not give you and grant you eternal life because your husband was great. Or you had a great wife or, you know, big mama, big mama. She prayed for all of us and big mama. She know she loved us and she loved God. And I know big mama, you going to make it. Yeah, big mama might make it. But just because big mama was faithful to God doesn't mean you get in. Matter of fact, the 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 vision of God from Deuteronomy is that the father would not be punished for his children's sins and the children would not be punished for the father's sins. It was in the vision of God that everybody would have to face God on what you have done. This is probably the, uh, se the season for accountability. You can no longer blame your father for why you sinned. Because if my daddy and they would have, hey, listen, God will judge them for what they've done. But you are responsible. You are responsible for your behavior. 
Now, I wish my grandfather would, and I wish my grandmother didn't, and I wish my daddy should have, and my mama, if she could have, and, and I wish my brother and my sister, and I wish my children could, I wish my uncle and my, and, and my, and my, uh, my aunt and my, and my, and my neighbors and my friends, and hey, this is the season for accountability. This is the season <laughs> where you need to take responsibility for your actions. Because you know what's going to happen on Judgment Day? God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit will look at what you've done. Your daddy already will answer for what he did. Your mama will already. Your wife is going to have to answer for how she treated you. Your husband is going to have to stand before God and why he was not. You're going to have to answer for what you've done. You're going to have to answer for what you've done. Matt, that's, that's why it is not. Your soul is at stake. Some of y'all are at congregations now and you and you following your friends, you following a trend, you doing you following other people. And what you don't realize is that God is going God is going to ask you. Jesus is going to ask you, why did you go there? Why did you tolerate that teaching? Why did you live on it? Well, Jesus, everybody was doing it. That's not a good enough answer. You're going to have to answer to God for what you've done. Right. So so let's look at this. Verse 32. And before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on the right hand, come ye blessed of my father, inherit, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And so what the Lord is letting us know is that Jesus is separating one by one. I want you to get that in your spirit on judgment day. He's not separating you by your family, your, your clique, your, uh, the school that you went to. He's not separating us by states or what year we were born. It's one by one. But I want to dive in a little bit deeper on what the scripture says on on what is Jesus actually looking at when he's separating us. Let's look at the text. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12, Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12. And I saw the dead small and great stand before God. So you can literally take Revelation chapter 20 and lay it over Matthew chapter 25, right? Uh, these things are happening at the same time. So verse 12, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. The Bible lets us know that when Jesus comes to separate the sheep from the goats, he's looking at a book. And the book has your activities, your decisions in it. Here's the beautiful thing about this book. This book is constantly being edited. What do you mean, Brother Williams? Every time that you humbly go before God and you ask God for forgiveness, every time that you forgive your enemy, every time that you uh, serve the poor, take care of the fatherless, every time you serve in God's kingdom, he's editing your he's editing your page. The Bible says at the end on Judgment Day, the books are going to be open. And everybody's going to be judged according to their works. So so in one part that answers your question, if my father's works wasn't good, that does not go on his children. Right. So if 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 your mother or your father did not raise you in the Lord, they did not bring you to worship, they did not serve God, and you chose in your adulthood, you know what, I'm going to serve God, I'm, I'm going to do what God has called me to do, their sins won't be rolled over onto you. Y'all remember back in the day when they had rollover minutes, and, and, they would, uh, <laughs> and they would charge you 
uh, if you didn't use so much, uh, they would they would roll it over to the next month. Uh, God doesn't do that. Whatever your father did, your father did. Whatever your mother did, your mother did. What that means is, and I promise you, you like that system. I don't want to be condemned by another person's behavior. So actually, you, you should be appreciative of this system. The thing with that is it requires for you to own up to your decisions and be accountable for your life. Right. So, you know, I, I wish I had better examples, but I did it. But God has given me an opportunity to make decisions for myself. Now, God won't charge me for their sins. God is only going to charge me for mine. And I cannot blame them for my sins. A lot of you are blaming people for why you're not active in church. A lot of you are blaming people for why you're not serving. A lot of you are blaming people for why you don't forgive. And, you've, if you, and you, you're telling stories of why you're not obeying God. And you're blaming other people. Here's the thing. This is why forgiveness is so important. Because if you don't forgive, the person that offended you can go and ask God for forgiveness and God will clean up their books and forgive them. And you will have to be you will end up being charged for your sins, even though God has forgiven them. You don't know who God is forgiven. You don't know who's asking for forgiveness. You don't know who's repenting. You don't know who's getting right with God in your life right now. And you're blaming other people for your condition, not realizing God has given them grace in theirs. Don't don't be so self-righteous that you think that you're going to make it in because you're a victim and they're going to lose because they hurt you. Not realizing they humbled themselves before God. They beat on their chest. They refused to even lift up their head. And, and they matter of fact, they called themselves, God, I've sinned against you. They spent. You know what? You didn't see them last Sunday. You didn't see them last night. You don't see how they prayed to God. This is why you got to be careful how you treat people because you don't know who's praying or repenting. You don't know whose heart is opening up to God right now. You don't know who's driving in their car, listening to a sermon right now. They didn't pull over the side of the road. And right now they're praying and crying out to God and saying, God, I'm coming back home. I've sinned against you. I've hurt your children. God, I'm so sorry. You may never see them again and they'll be on their way to the pearly gates. And there you go holding a grudge and you angry and you got all that stuff in your heart about what somebody did and you don't even realize that those individuals have given their heart unto God and there you go sitting bitter and God has said move to the left the Lord will call you a goat because you chose not to love you that love which is the greatest commandment you chose not to love you chose not to forgive you chose not to give it all to God Hey, sometimes, you know, we, church is a community and we are responsible for one another. But there's a good portion where you also need to be careful of yourself that you don't fall. You sometimes we can be so caught up in what other people are doing. You're going to lose your own soul being being occupied with other people's business. That's not even your business. Hey, what they doing over there and what they said over there and who breaking up and who mad at who and who got a child out of wedlock. And did you hear what I you all you you caught up on everybody else's business but your own. I want to let you know on judgment day, the Lord is only talking to you about your business. He ain't asking you about other people's business. Right? So the, so the Bible let us, let us know in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12, a book is going to be opened. And here's the thing. When that book is open, it's going to have all of your activities in it. Brother Williams, that don't make me feel good. It probably don't. And if anybody spend any time meditating on it, it, it probably don't make any of us feel good that we're constant. Hey, before before there was GPS or people watching us and all that kind of stuff, the Lord has always been watching. Technology is actually just catching up to an all. Somebody says, I want my privacy. Don't you know you've never had a private life? God has always seen everything. You can have two people commit the same sin, but because God looks at the heart, God said, well, wait a minute, this person, they may have sinned, but they weren't trying to hurt or they wasn't, their heart may have been sincere or whatever the case may be. You have another person do that and God said, I'm going to punish you because your heart is cold. 
what you don't realize is that God is the, God doesn't just look at works and sins. He also looks at the heart. The question you got to ask on today is what, what is the condition of your heart? Do you yearn after God? Brother Williams, I'm so tired of repenting. I want, I want to let y'all know right now. Don't get tired of repenting. <laughs> hey, that's the devil. Actually, that's the devil in your ear. Don't get tired of repenting. Repenting means you still care. Repenting means that your heart is still open. Repentance means that you still have the desire to walk with God. Don't get tired of repenting. Repenting means that there's still a chance. That's what repentance means. Now, I want to deal with the other part of, of this question. Because part of the question is, are the sins, <laughs> are, the, are the sins of my family, are the sins of men, will, will that roll over on the children? Right? Now, um, Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says for the wages of sin right is death when you do something you pay for what you did sin will your sins are your righteousness will be brought on judgment day before the Lord to be judged right but the consequences of your actions that's what your family suffers from so I'll give you an example. Um, a man has a family, has children. He goes to work. He gets paid. And then he comes home. And by the time he comes home, she says, uh, baby, did you get paid today? He says, uh, yeah, I got paid today. And he hands her $300. She looks at the money. She looks at $300 and she's like, wait a minute. Um, you've been working for two weeks and all you got is $300. And he kind of just stares at her. She looks outside and she sees a brand new vehicle. She said, wait a minute, where, where did you get a new car? And then he, she looks him up and down and he got some, he got some new clothes on and got his hair cut and he got, a matter, matter, matter of fact, he, he got some new pieces on him. And she's looking like, what? Did you spend the money? She said, our baby's got to eat. Little, 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 um, Tasha needs some shoes. Brandon, little Brandon, uh, he got to go to the dentist. He got a toothache. Baby, you bought a brand new car? And you bought yourself stuff? Now, I want to let you know, the sins of the father will not be charged to the children. But what that family is dealing with is the curse of a <laughs> of an irresponsible man. Another example, there's a there's a mother and she has two or three children and she you know what she's just tired of being in the house she wants to be free her girlfriends are calling her and so she she uh she sends one child over to the neighbor she sends the other two children over with her mama and she out to two three o'clock in the morning she's having a good time and the children are going to bed grieving saying i miss my mama where's mama how come mama ain't here does mama love us? Does mama want to be with you? Does she want to even be here with us? Do is is and so now all of a sudden you the children have built in uh you're, you're building within your children insecurity. Now I want to let you know the sins of the mother belong to the mother. But the actions and the repercussions of your relatives, your parents. Some people call it like this. They're family curses. Let me tell you what, a, what, a, what, what they mean when they say a family curse. 
your mother, your father, your grandfather, your grandmother may have made some bad decisions and now the family is suffering, even though God won't charge you for it. Sometimes it can feel like God is angry with you because of the bad decisions of the people you're connected to. Somebody said, I didn't do anything wrong. Yes, you didn't do anything wrong. But because you're connected to somebody who made bad decisions, now you're suffering. I always reference the story of Jonah. Jonah was running from the Lord. And when, when Jonah was running from the Lord, God sent a storm to get Jonah to wake up. But here's the thing. Everybody on that boat was in the storm. Sometimes you're in a family and somebody on the boat is running from God and God sent a storm for that family member, but you're going through it. Now that's possible. God does not charge you for sins of other people, but sometimes you suffer because you live in the neighborhood of disobedient people. And that's a hard pill to swallow. Some of you right now, uh, the husband is struggling and the family is struggling financially because the wife loves going to Target and she's on her third credit card maxed out and she can't stop spending. And the family is is in debt up to their ears. And he's crying because I'm connected to somebody and I love somebody that's actually making some bad decisions and the family is suffering. Sometimes it's the children. Sometimes that child and it's one o'clock in the morning and the police are calling the house saying, you know, are you uh, are you Mrs. Taylor? Are you Mr. Taylor? And you say and your heart is sinking because you didn't do anything wrong. Matter of fact, you've been walking with God. You go to worship. You read your Bible. You pray. That's for you. Your child has not accepted Jesus Christ. And your children are causing you to grieve because you tried your best to bring them to Sunday school and you tried to instill in them the word of God and you don't understand why. What is it? And it's one o'clock in the morning and your child s slipped out of the house and now they got caught up in something and you got to get a lawyer. And now you three, four, five thousand dollars. You sit there calling family members trying to raise money to get a lawyer for your child and maybe they got somebody pregnant and now you dealing with a whole nother family and you've been trying to live right in God and it's bringing shame to your family and I thought y'all was Christians and we are Christians but I don't it's that one child that's bringing a storm and it feels like you're suffering and your husband you in a worship service and you're looking around and you don't know where your husband is and he's sleep or at home or he's running the streets and your heart is just grieving because you wanted so badly to have a godly and a Christian relationship and it didn't turn out that way and now your children are picking sides and your children are saying why we want to stay home with daddy because if he don't have to go to worship uh, then we don't want to go to worship either and you sitting in worship service and you praying to God Lord my house is is divided and I don't understand what's going on or maybe maybe daddy is not mom is not just all of this different stuff and you're crying your eyes out because this is or maybe you got some health conditions and the only reason that you have health conditions is because maybe mama or daddy was on drugs while you was and now you over there having to deal with stuff because they were wilding out in their 20s when they had you and now you over there taking medication just to I mean people go through stuff or maybe you at a congregation and the church was doing so well and everybody was loving on one another and maybe somebody did something and the church is now fighting. Somebody cheated with somebody. Somebody stole the church and now this is going on. Or maybe there's a power struggle and some of you try to tell everybody, no, everybody stop. God was getting the glory and souls were being saved and the church was growing and now all of a sudden people are suffering because of the decisions of one or two different people and Hey, listen, God will not charge you for another person's sins, but sometimes this is why church community is so important.
Because sometimes when families are going through certain things, you think it don't affect you. You be like, I pray for y'all. And you don't think it's affect you, affecting you. But what you don't realize is their storm could eventually come over and affect your house and your children. And, and all of a sudden, everybody's invested because everybody's suffering. This is what happens sometimes when members and people of the Lord's house are going through things and you so focused on you that you don't care about what's happening with them. There's a there's a balance. Uh, there's a balance that we all have to walk and th that that balance is there is a thing called my business. But then there are all there's also a thing called the Church of Christ, the body of Christ. Well, we're responsible for each other. It's my responsibility to ask you, how are you doing spiritually? It's my responsibility to ask you, hey, um, we, we, we have a lot of Christian orphans in the church. Brother Williams, what do you mean by a Christian orphan? A Christian orphan is our Christians who attend worship service every Sunday, but they had a different church almost every other, every other Sunday, every month. They always visit it. They, they hold no accountability to anybody. They, they, they consider themselves almost uh, the elite, elevated, right? Um, and, and one of the reasons, this is not everybody, but one of the reasons they're constantly visiting is so that they can be responsible for nothing. If you're a mature Christian, you don't have the luxury to attend a different congregation every Sunday. If you're a mature Christian, you know why? Because mature Christians have responsibilities. Children are free. A child can stay up to two, three, four, five o'clock in the morning because they don't have a job to go to the next morning. That's why you call them a child. Uh, a child can run around and break things. And, and the reason why they can act like that, because they hold no responsibilities. They don't have to fix it. The, different, the, the, the biggest difference between a child and an adult, and I'm talking about in Christianity, is the responsibility that they carry. Do you know why preachers... It's not healthy for a preacher to preach at a different congregation every Sunday if he's a preacher of a congregation because he has responsibilities at the place where he ministers. So he may preach here and there, but if he if he leaves too much, that church where he ministers starts to suffer. And many times the members of that congregation will say, hey, hey, preacher, you got to make a decision. If you want to be on the road and you want to go out and evangelize and tell people about Jesus Christ, then you probably need to let this go. Because we're suffering when you're away, because there's always here's the thing. A preacher that's always away. The, the pulpit is always rotating. Got a new person there, which means you got preachers in that pulpit who are not really invested in that congregation. They're just filling in for that Sunday. If that's true for a preacher, imagine that as members. You can't have members jumping around from churches because here's the thing. When you go through a storm, when when death hits your door. And your life gets turned upside down. Now, all of a sudden, you want the church to be there for you. But nobody, you, you have taught us not to check on you. You have taught us not to ask you, hey, you know, where you been? Because you didn't told everybody. Well, I just kind of visit around. I'm just kind of free. I, I have brothers and, you know, we all have brothers and sisters all over the country. But if I'm a mature Christian. Just like if you're a mother, if you're a father, you got to get up and go to work. Why? I don't feel like it. It ain't got nothing to do with your feelings. You got responsibility. You got to feed your kids. You got to take care of your family. You have to, if you're a mature Christian, you got to do, you know how many times I have to do what I, I, I don't want to do this. But it doesn't matter how I feel because I have responsibilities. If I'm a minister called from God, there are people that God has called me to and I need to minister to. Hey, just even on, on, on dealing with Gethsemane, there may be some days I may not be feeling well. I may be kind of feeling sick. I may want, kind of want to go home. But hey, I do this consistently because God has called me to do so. And I have to be responsible because if I lay down on my gift and I go to sleep on my gift, he'll take it away. Some of y'all are going through storms because actually you've lost love for your community. You don't really care what's going on at your church. You just show up for a word. You still you, you take from that church and you don't pour back into it. 
So that's hopefully I can I've I've answered that question. God does not judge you for other people's sins. You're free of that. If that's what your wife did, if your husband participated in that, uh, you know, you think about our legal system. Um, if 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 uh, if your child robbed robbed the store, the family don't go to prison. Your child does. On Judgment Day, you stand before God and you're going to have to answer for what you've done. But while at the same time, we are responsible for loving and caring for one another. So here's the thing. God may not charge you for their sins. God can actually charge you for a lack of love. I see that you I see that you're going through a very I see that you're losing everything in your life. I see that your whole life is on fire. And I just shrug my shoulders and be like, mm, I hope you make it. God didn't call us to live like that. That's not what God has called us to do. Sometimes we're suffering because of the lack of love. I pray that this has blessed you. Um, my prayer for you is that on that day when Jesus opens up the books, I pray he will say good and faithful servant. If right now you can't speak confidently about that, you need to go to God in prayer. There may be somebody under the sound of my voice. You may need to give your life to Jesus Christ. You may need to be baptized for the remission of your sins. You may need to believe that Jesus died for you, that he was buried and rose again. If you believe that Jesus died, that he was buried and that he rose again, that he loved you so much that he gave his life. I'm, I'm imploring you. I'm begging you right now. Please give your life to Jesus Christ by obeying the gospel, repenting and confessing he is the son of God. You must make your confession and be baptized. Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved and you will be baptized. You will be brought into by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ, to the church, the church of Christ. I encourage you to do that today. Hey, listen, I want you to like this message. I want you to share it. Um, if this message has been a blessing to you, are you, if you believe in this ministry, please sow a seed. Uh, we are supported by your offering. We are supported by your giving. This allows us to continue to broadcast and get this message out. I want to thank each and every one of you for those who pray. Uh, there are those who you pray for me. You pray for this ministry. You pray for North Colony. Uh, Pray for the body of Christ. Man, the church is going through some things right now where people are not holding to the truth. Uh, they're compromising their faith. They're going off with fads. I want to let you know on Judgment Day, none of that's going to matter. God is not going to ask you about the culture. He's not going to ask you about what the movement was. He's going to ask you about why did you make the decision you made. Some of y'all are sitting in places where you don't agree with. And God is going to ask you, why did you stay there? Why did you sit there knowing it wasn't the truth? You complained every Sunday about and you just you didn't do anything. You just you just sat there. Well, brother, I don't know what I can do. I know sitting down ain't an option. Doing nothing is not an option. Doing up nothing is actually agreeing to the dysfunction. You got to do something. Hey, listen, we are here to heal, help and restore. Be blessed.